Let's start with a little exercise. Take a long and deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and now try to hold your breath for a few seconds. And exhale. Breathing, taken for granted by most of us. Not so by a few very special children. They are dependent on artificial respiration for every breath they take. Imagine being in their skin. Imagine further, the canal of your ventilator was suddenly blocked and you were unable to express this. Imagine instead having to rely on your cryptic stream of vital signs to be deciphered as quickly as possible. This is the story of the children of Atemreich. A story I hold very close to my heart and the story of how technology can go a long way when applied appropriately by us humans. Something I would have wished for my brother to come true when I was a little girl. The technology would free his body from the severe epileptic convulsions he has been suffering from since his earliest days. Sometimes he was hooked up to machines for weeks. While we feared for his life, doctors and nurses desperately tried to find a clue in the many vital data gathered that would help him. Sadly, this has been denied to him up until this day. More than 30 years later, my brother still suffers from epileptic convulsions and they are that severe that he cannot cope with his everyday life on his own. The dream I had as a little girl could not be fulfilled for him. Still, I did not give up hope that technology can transform lives for the better. That is also one of the reasons that I'm a co-CEO of a company today that is committed in doing just that, helping others by means of technology. In the case of the children of Atemreich, technology helps us know in time when they stop breathing. Because what we all take for granted is not possible for the 18 girls and boys of the Munich-based facility. For medical reasons, they rely on machines for every breath they take and require intensive care 24-7. Emergencies occur on a regular basis and often they are life-threatening. This was the case with Maxi. Maxi is a 14-year-old boy who has been living in the children's home since his birth. Like other children at Atemreich, Maxi is not able to speak. His communication is further limited that he can neither see nor hear. In the past, Maxi repeatedly suffered from autoaggressive phases during which he hurt himself and cut the connection to his ventilator. The caretakers and doctors were at their loss as to what was causing Maxi's aggression. Life-threatening situations have also occurred to Bianca. From time to time, the three-year-old suffers from respiratory failure. The little girl then has to be resuscitated. Needless to say, we are all devastated every time this happens. And the fact that we don't know what is causing the respiratory failure and are thus not able to help Bianca is particularly painful to all of us. As both Maxi's and Bianca's communications are limited, doctors and caretakers' primary indication of how they are doing stem from their vital signs, such as pulse, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and heart rate. Imagine witnessing your child suffering, not being able to grasp what is causing the discomfort 
and being confronted with an unconnected cryptic stream of data. Up until very recently, this data was transferred manually from the monitors onto paper and from there into the documentation system every five hours for every child. With this manual and error-prone procedure, systematic and efficient real-time analysis of the vital signs was not possible. Therefore, we were also lacking the decisive evidence of what was wrong. As a sister to a severely disabled brother, I was deeply touched by the children of Atemreich. And as a co-CEO of a company specialized in data and AI, I decided that we should join our hearts and minds to help the children. In the first step, we connected all medical devices, such as monitors and ventilators, with the cloud. There, the device's data, such as pulse, oxygen saturation, blood pressure and heart rate, were brought together and refined by our data scientists. This provided the foundation of the data to be analyzed and visualized in an integrated and automatic way. On so-called dashboards, doctors and caretakers can now see all the vital data at a glance and over the course of time. This was obviously not possible before, with the data being recorded separately and by hand in intervals of five hours. Together with their specialist knowledge, this helps them to decide on the appropriate treatments. On this image, you see what a sample dashboard looks like. On the left, there is an aggregated view of all vital data of the child. And on the right, you see a detailed analysis of the heart rate with deviations. Of course, doctors and caretakers can look at other vital data in more detail, such as pulse or blood pressure. To grant doctors and caretakers a holistic view on the children's condition, we also integrated the medication and anxiety protocols into our solution. This way, doctors and caretakers can uncover correlations that aren't evident to the naked eye, like, for example, between medication and unusual behavior. Remember Maxi I talked about a couple of minutes ago? It was exactly this aggregated view on the data that helped us to discover the reason for Maxi's discomfort, a too high a dosage of a medication. Since the medication was adjusted, Maxi is doing much better. Besides analyzing and visualizing the vital data in combination with the protocols, we also set up a dedicated artificial intelligence. While in our everyday lives, artificial intelligence might help us to discover new music or choose the route that it's most efficient, it accomplishes much more in the case of Atemreich. It helps us know in time when a child stops breathing. Or in more technical terms, it helps us detect irregularity in the artificial respiration of the children. For example, when the canal of the ventilator is closed. If such an incident occurs, the AI colors a corresponding sequence on the doctor's dashboard in red, as you can see in this image. With the help of so-called markers, doctors validate or falsify the findings of the AI. This way, they train it. Of course, they can also map the findings with any other data collected. So while data scientists are needed to collect, refine and analyze the vital data and set up the AI, it is doctors that make sense of it and decide on the appropriate treatments. Going back to Bianca, the analysis could not help us yet in finding out why she's suffering from respiratory arrest. This is why we started doing video recording of the girl. They also stream directly into the clouds. Their doctors and caretakers can access them to further analyze incidents. Over the course of time, we hope to better understand 
the facial expression and gesture of Bianca and the other children of Atemreich with the help of the AI. Solutions like this can, of course, also be used to assist with the care of healthy children. For example, by video monitoring babies in their sleep and alerting parents when their baby's mouth and nose are covered. In fact, solutions like this already exist. Going back to Atemreich, Bianca has thankfully been doing better in the past months. However, we are still trying to find out why the little girl suffers from respiratory arrests. Every learning will assist us in helping the other children too, as you can see here in the picture, such as Fabian or Jason. As the last minutes have clearly shown, technology can go a long way when used purposefully. In the case of Bianca and Maxi, it enables doctors and nurses to better understand why they're not feeling well and, if necessary, adjust the treatment accordingly and in time, or in other words, before it's too late. Problems such as respiratory arrests and unconsciousness can be prevented. What is far more important, and what I hope to have demonstrated in my talk too, is that humans remain crucial now and in the future. Contrary to the prophecies spread by the media that machines will eventually overtake us, this is not the case, nor will it ever be. As the story of the children home of Atemreich demonstrates on a very poignant way. Without the data scientists, the data could not be analyzed. Without the doctors, it could not be made sense of. And without the caretakers who dedicate their life to helping others, there would not be an Atemreich. So by fully embracing the rapid technological change, it is crucial to put humans first. Let's be clear. It is only right that technology plays an important role today, especially in its function of supporting, relieving and complementing us humans. In the case of artificial intelligence, it helps us recognize complex patterns in a huge amount of data that we wouldn't recognize ourselves. It is also clear that technology will take up more and more space, not least to the current developments. And this has its implications. Nevertheless, the human factor is and will remain crucial. This includes thinking carefully about the importance we want to give to data and technology. For they are not an end in themselves. It's up to us to turn them into a blessing.